Howdy, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to trade a little bit of your time to see if I can get you to smile. Thanks for clicking the link and seeing what this is all about. I would like to do a little bit of a painting sketch or a painting doodle over here and see if by the end I can get you to smile. If I can get you to smile, the world's a better place. Especially if I can get a bunch of you to smile, right? All right, so let's go do some painting. All right, so we're mic'd up, got the paints out, got a canvas, ready to go. So let's see what we can come up with. First off, what do we need? We need a sky. So I'm gonna use a little bit of a phthalo blue. That's a bright one. And I'm gonna put him. Now remember, this is just a little doodle. This is just a little something warm up. Let's get it going. Alright, you see that? A little blue. Just right out of the tube, a little bit on the end of the brush. Putting some day low blue sky in there. Little swirlies. And a lot of skies, they have a gradation to them. So they go from a lighter or a dark, or a dark to a lighter, from one color to another color. So we're gonna lighten this guy up on the bottom a little bit with just some titanium white. So we're gonna use the same brush, a little bit of titanium white, start down low. And a lot of pressure. And back down. Then crisscross strokes. I guess both sides of the brush. That way, that way, that way, that way. Alright. You hear the birds in the background? Uh, budgies, parakeets in the next room. A little mini flock of them. We just had one pass away and buried him out there underneath the pine tree. So, we had to get the one remaining friend. Cleaning off that brush a little bit. Now. I'm gonna take a cute dip. I'm gonna make some fluffy clouds. Start right about in yeah. Very light. Go back and forth. Ooh, let's go big. He's climbing. He's a big one. Oh. Just making circles. Making some circles. Making some circles. And rotate that Q-tip a little bit to get a cleaner side, take off some more paint. And then cloud shape, right? And use the other end of it. And I'm just gonna gently feather, feather my mess of squiggles out. Staying within my lines I made. I'm gonna take that brush, same one we were first using. I'm gonna get some of the excess paint off of it. Start down here at the bottom. I'm just gonna go over the top of them. Very soft now. Very soft. They're almost gone. Well, what'd you paint that for? There's nothing there. I'm gonna grab another one of my Q-tips. I'm gonna go back to that one. You can still see a little bit. And it's gonna lightly, very lightly. You can feel the Q-tip gliding on the surface. I'm twisting that Q-tip around a little bit. Back and forth for the bottom. Put the Q tip around. This guy needs a little bit of definition over here. Very soft. Very soft. 
I'm just gonna fade on out over there. All right, let's take that Q-tip and dip it in some of that titanium white. We'll gloop on there. Now we just punch up some of these areas. Just dabbing it and rolling it on there. These are some of them little clouds that are closer to us. They're in the light. Same Q-tip. Roll it. Roll it around in titanium white. Let's do it again over here. Oh. Boy, I'm, I'm tempted to just take him on up. I should. We'll see how he looks in a minute. Rolling it around. Picking up some of that blue sky, putting that in the cloud. And then lighter as I get to the bottom and the paint runs out, so to speak. Yeah, we got something going on, huh? All right. Now, of course, we need to put in the mountains. We're going to use that same brush. I think we're going to take a little bit of the ultramarine and then mix in a little bit of the phthalo blue. Put a little black on there. Darken it up, right? And it feels pretty thick. There's no medium. There's no magic white. There's no linseed. It's just paint out of the tube. Okay, so now I've pretty much changed the color of that. I'm going to have, uh, let's see, so highest point there in the back. I'm going to kind of come down like this. So it's tempting to do another high point here, but let's try to balance it out and let's bring it over here. All right, pushing the brush splays and I'm just gonna walk it. Well, it almost looks like a tidal wave back there. Just keep pushing it. Just let it pick up some of that sky. It looks a little fuzzy. That's just the technique. And drag it on out, all right? I'm gonna use the other side of the brush. So there you can see what we picked up, kind of, sort of. So I'm gonna use the other side and come back here where I started. And again, pushing, lift the end of the brush. Get them, get it, get it on there. And pull it down. I'm gonna push it, splay it. Let's feather it out. Seeing it makes the sides and all those little different kinds of things that you'd see if you were looking at a mountain off in the distance, right? Boy, where are we? The moon? Look at that. What should we stick on there? Should we go autumn? It's kind of a cool sky. We could go with some warm autumn colors. And let's do a little, using that same brush, I just was wiping off. Let's do. What would we look like? So now we're tall here, tall there, tall there. So we're coming down this way. So we want to balance out with something over here. So we kind of want to, what would, what would look, what would look right over here? Maybe some cliff? What we, maybe we're standing on a cliff. Maybe we're out here on the edge. We're on the edge, baby. Or that could be, what could that be? I don't know. Bring it on around. We'll come in right there. So we have something maybe tall here. Something like that. What's this going to be out here? Cold, cold mountain lake. Hmm? Hmm. Well, better do something. The clock's ticking, isn't it? You all, you all only got so much time to smile. Let's get a little bit of that phthalo blue. Same brush. I haven't switched. Mm -hmm. We get some of our mountain color. We're gonna drag that down into here. Go back and forth. A little more mountain color. Doesn't have to be exact. Just gonna give the idea. We we'll need to put some of the clouds out there. Now we're going to need some shore, some land, some trees. 
We were thinking about autumn something, huh? Well, let's take a little bit of yellow ochre. Same brush. I just gooped it in the yellow ochre. Let's do... Let's say, let's, okay, so the brush is fresh. The paint is fresh on the brush. And right about in the middle, if I put this down first, that's going to be the most saturated or the brightest. And as I work one way or the other, it's going to thin out and it's going to pick up other paint and it's going to get dirty. So if I want brightness here, I'm going to stick more color there. And as I come out to the sides, starts grabbing the other paint. Thins out, runs out of the brush, so to speak. Bring it on back around. Dab, dab, dab. Dab, dab, dab. I'm going to put some down in the possible water. I'm not committed yet. Okay. Clean that mess out. Let's grab some more of the yellow ochre. Just one side of the brush. Begin in the center, up, down, up, down. And then you start kind of pushing, mushing, mushing, mushing in there. Okay. All right. We'll pull those down into the supposed water. Back and forth. Maybe sort of kind of something. So that's the farthest away. But we need a little bit of we need a little bit of pizzazz in there, don't we? Hmm. What's the pizzazz? Autumn colors. I if we hit it with a little bit of let's take some of that yellow ochre and put a little alizarin crimson in it. That's gonna give us kind of a reddish brown. Let's go more alizarin crimson. Then yellow ochre. That's going to give us more on the red side. All right. Let's give a little pizzazz. A little pizzazz on the edge of the chair. I'm going to take the brush and I'm just going to tap, 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 tap randomly. Because this is not your detail area back here. We just need some hints of what's going on. What time of the year is it? All right. Just making some messes. All right. A little bit of that down in the water. One way or the other, reflections in the water are brighter or darker. So if it's lighter up here, it's darker down there, and the sky is kind of the same. I can never, I can never remember. <clears throat> okay. Now we're going to give it some juice. We're going to take some Windsor Red. Straight Windsor Red. Bam. I'm going to give it some juice. Just down one, down two, all right, a little bit of zig and a zag, make a reverse L a couple times, smear it out a little bit, see what happens, happy accidents, <clears throat> I don't look too bad against that blue, I'm just going to put a little bit of some of that down there in the water, whatever is going on. Okay. So that's our distance stuff. Now what are we doing up here? What are we doing up here? I guess that red's grabbing some of that blue. I think it's making some bushes. Why do we got bushes here? Maybe we should have bushes and a fence post. Maybe just turn this into a little. Maybe turn this into a little waterfall. I like little waterfalls. All right. So sometimes in the autumn you get them red. The willows, I guess, turn red down there. You're saying a waterfall. I don't see a waterfall. Well, I think if we had it. Maybe kind of spilling, because we left that gap back there for whatever reason. So we have it spilling here, kind of come out here, get some little waves, some little ripples. And then it'd come down to here, start to hit into here. Maybe these aren't bushes, they're rocks. Kind of look bumpy, right? So then they'd hit the bumpies. 
and just kind of start to spill out. It's just going to spill out and we've got a little bit of that mountain color. Grab a lot more of the mountain color. <clears throat> See, but if I have that down here, then I've got a big thing here. Maybe so I'm gonna have to balance that with one of them, one of them, one of them, one of them big trees. Let's go for a big tree. Let's take some of that alizarin crimson, mix in some black, grab a little bit of the yellow ochre. It's kind of a very dark reddish brown, maybe some more black in it. All right, still using the same brush. All right, so our trees are going to be sitting in some rocks. Grasses are peeking, peeking through. Turn the brush over. It'll be all rocky, right? All right. And tree trunk. <laughs> yeah, I could do the tree trunk out of. Uh, Using that same brush. I was laughing because I could do the thinking I could do the old palette knife and the fan brush for the trees. Gonna grab a little sap green. Take a little bit of Windsor yellow. Green it up, both sides of the brush. And I think that cloud over there is the brighter side's kind of over this way. So I think I think the light's coming in this way. Very lightly. Just pulling that across the top. Flip the brush over. Give a little highlight with a little bit more yellow to that. Again, it's Windsor yellow. Just a little highlight. Lifting up. Drag it across, lift up, drag it across, lift up, drag it across. And that's just so we can have a dimension to it. And you can stick some ugly little grasses down here. Or maybe they're them low lying alpine. Kind of like a, kinda like, they're kind of like a little pine tree. They grow, look kind of pine tree frondy, but they stick closer to the ground. Not, not, a, not a fit, sir. Anyway, I'll be the handle what those are. Okay. So now we got to get into. Let's darken this up. We need a little black, a little ultramarine. Let's smear. Smear this in pretty good. Pretty thick. As colors you get close to us, they start to get brighter, more saturated. As you get farther away, they're bluer, disappearing into the distance. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just gonna wiggle the brush around and see what I can start to see in there. Hmm. I like I like those. I like this. This makes me think that our water. Put 
the brush over is a little, a little cleaner. Use the edge of it, scrape it. Because I think I'm going to handle a little bit of water that's going to fall. It's going to fall out of here. Just pull the brush down. Like that. And it hits the bottom and it makes the bubblies. Okay. So, we can't mix a nice white and a black, so that's going to make gray. So, I'm going to use my Q-tips again. I'm going to say, all right, well, this water's flip it over so I'm clean. See, this is, just a, this is just a sketch. This is that thing that gets, like, what am I doing here? You know, it's all oil paint. It easily comes off of this surface. This surface is uh, gesso. A uh, company called Ampersand uh, makes these ones. Um, this is their value series, the cheap one, because starving artist. Um, and I like the surface because it's like a melamine thick, but it's not laminate. It's gesso, which is gesso is like a latex paint. It's like a primer. <clears throat> and now we're just figuring out off of our sketch. Like that water is gonna sploosh sort of kind of down in there like that and sploosh you can see my just did one of my old habits I try to refrain myself from and that's I'll go all the way down like from the top where I just cleaned it off I'll go all the way down into the paint, into the thicker stuff, and then I'll come back and I'll drag it again. And what I'm doing is I'm just transferring the thicker stuff up to here, the area I just cleaned. <clears throat> and one of my mental practices lately is I have to keep working in that area and not spread it around unless that's the effect I'm going for. You got the splashing and the splooshies. Like you can see from just that wiggle in the brush, you can, see, you know, rocks and clouds are tricky, but you can see, you can see them, can't you? Maybe it's just me. So like this guy here, he's there's the dark side, there's the highlight. Not taking too much off. Just want to accentuate them a little bit, accent them a little bit, right? Not the whole thing, just throw the highlights at. Down here, we got something going on. We got some. Something over here, a little bit there. And earlier I mentioned a point out, I really like this guy. He's got like three sides to him there. There's a little bit of something there. Something there. That picks up some of that brown. What do we got on the other side? A little bit here. Some in there. Normally I can kind of zen out on these. Trying to walk and chew bubble gum or talk and paint and figure out what I'm doing and stay on track. Kind of twist the old brain up a little bit. Good mental exercise. So I was thinking with the water coming down into here and splooshing, it's naturally gonna have the rings that are gonna go out, the shoreline, so to speak. But that he'd be pushed behind a rock, you know. Let me get some. Let me get some color. Let me just take a clean Q-tip. I want some of that phthalo blue. That's a beautiful blue. And put a little bit of white to it. And roll it around on the Q-tip. I'm gonna start a line. Get that paint up there. I'm gonna take the other end of it. I'm just gonna drag it down. And try not to do my old habits. I need to 
brighten them up some more. You can put a little paint on as thick as you want. The thicker it is, the longer it takes to dry. White is one of those that takes forever to dry. But we're just screwing around here. You can put mediums in them. Um, there's things called liquins. There's a liquid impasto that lets you build up these thick textures and it'll dry the next day. Good stuff. Used it all. Toxic. It's toxic in a sense you don't eat it. And you can still breathe it, for heck's sakes. Don't be afraid of it. Just be smart with it. Just like electricity in your house. Electricity in your house will kill you. Click that switch every day, don't you? Okay. So we got a cute little fall going on here. And I want to push. I'm going to push all this back some. Just very gently going over the top. All the way back to what I think is a possible shoreline back there. Beachfront property. Okay. So now up in here, I could use some more. What I wanted to do is I wanted to fill, fill this in with some of the black and ultramarine, the dark mountain color. To push that back, but I really I don't know, I kind of like how it's wet and dark back there. Let's see what happens. Sticking that paint on there where I want it. I'm just jiggling the brush, giving a little twist to where I think I'm I'm about to the finish line and let go. Okay. In those rings I can see that rock would need to come down more. So I'm gonna grab some more paint. Put on my rock, and push, and gently wiggle it and pull. If I just put it on there and pull, then it'll pull the paint off that I just put on there. All right, that pushes it back there, doesn't it? Now, for these little kinds of places, gotta get ahead of myself. I wanna push like the rocks up here, kinda like the same thing I did there to push that back. Push that around. <laughs> All right. There we go. That'll help a little bit. We could get some get some bushes, some twigs. Cause there'd be lots of fun things growing around here, right? This isn't a big waterfall. It's just one of them little one of them little places where you go catch you put enough worm on the end of your hook. You pull out nice 14, 16 inch brook trout in there. So, with these dark little places and them brook trout, they need, you know what? That awesome green sticky moss. So we load it up into the brush and let's just get it on some of them, some of them highlight areas. So you want to see your little scratches in there. You want to say, okay, well, Dub, 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 dub. Follow the shape of them. Alright. Bring some of that green down in the water. Let's give it, uh, God, you know what would be nice? Maybe we had like a burnt sienna we could put in that water. You know, sometimes you see those mountain streams and they've got, they just got that nice kind of, kind of a brown look in them. Not a gross brown. It's like they're rich in the tannins and just someplace nice. Big old brook trout would live. I used to fish a lot. Fly fish. I was addicted to it. We lived up in Idaho for a little while. People wouldn't go fish with me because they could never get me out of the river. Hmm. 
back to Utah. And there's no real fun places close to fish that I like, that I enjoy. You get spoiled, you know? All right. So I guess there'd have to be like a little trail to get down to the edge of the shore. So you can sneak up on that. Sneak up on that big old brown trout down there. So that dirt's going to cover over a little bit of them rocks because these rocks get worn away by a rise and fall of the water that comes out of here and takes the dirt, leaves the rocks, finds the least passive resistance. Let's finish off a little bit of, a little bit of the sky down in there. Not like that. <laughs> oh boy, you could, this ended up being a lot more than I was thinking, and a lot more lopsided than, a lot more lopsided than I was thinking too. But you can come in and, gosh, you can find all your little rocks and highlights and something that'd be fun too. <laughs> was even, all right, I'm getting the wrong colors here. I'm just being silly. As you could even have, let's see, the composition would be like this. You could have the fisherman stand over there, but I don't want to even block that. So what would be better to balance this out from there to there? So you go with a triangle from there to here. So on something like this, maybe you could do, oh, this is going to get me in trouble. <laughs> yeah. So that'd be, that'd be a bum. A big old bum has to be a big bum. We like big butts. I'm sorry, I won't go there. You have a big bum there. Then you'd have the. <laughs> I'm trying to do this fast. I'm out of time. I know I am. Then you'd have a big shoulder right in there, something like that. Then have to come up. I don't want to destroy too much of that because you paint over the things that you don't like. Um, and I'm liking this stuff, but point being is. We'd have some big old moosey antlers. <laughs> You'd have moss hanging on them, right? Big old moosey antlers and old Bullwinkle would be sitting there looking. Maybe he's having a conversation with that trout in there going, Hey, I see some fishermen's coming this way. You better you better get your food now and be ready to hide. How's the moose antlers go? Let's see. His eyeball would be maybe somewhere in there. His head would come down, something like that. Have a big old moose, moose chin, but his neck is his neck is obscuring that part. And then the shoulder. Let's see. His shoulder in there, roll down the bum. Big old moose bum. Uh, where's the shoulder? Neck, shoulder, elbow, arm. Leg come down, back leg, knee, that way, oh, heck, the other side, that's all tucked in there and rolled up to that, and let's see, moose antler, he's got an ear, oh, he's got his goiter thing too, moose antler, <laughs> spoons, I think spoons, let's see, they got to come up, and then they got tines on the ends, and perspective wise, that one doesn't look like anything but a bad tree branch. And this side, you'd, you'd be able to see it all. I can't remember if the tines are on the front or the back. Make it up as you go, kids. Hmm. Use that shape. I'll put some on the front anyway. Is that how they go? Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, maybe that's the best part that got you the smiles, a doodle of a moose. All right, so for a close-up before we go so you can see it, because this is the only way I got to hold the camera for now. There's our, there's our doodle for the day. And, uh, yeah, once again, thanks for taking the time to see what this is all about. And you let me know if you like, and if you did, then I'll do some more. Have a wonderful day. Keep smiling. Spread them smiles. They're contagious. <laughs>